Hey, how's it going? Alex here from Ideaspot, and today we have a tutorial on a plugin called Tutor LMS. Now, this plugin, you can use it to build an online course and sell it using WooCommerce. All right, so we're going to be using Tutor LMS by Themium.com, and the good news here is the free version of Tutor LMS allows you to sell courses using WooCommerce. So that's an awesome feature. Most of the other options when it comes to LMS don't give you that for free. So straight away, I really love that feature. So basically, when a visitor comes to your site, they can go um, click join. There's an add to cart button using that join button, adds it straight to cart. You can go through the WooCommerce checkout process. It's all completely seamless. So using Tutor LMS, you'll learn how to set up the course page with your little add to cart button, a little intro video, and um, it'll show the list of your lessons and quizzes. So this is basically all you're gonna need if you're running online courses, if you're doing corporate training, school, anything like that, this is gonna be perfect. All right, let's get started. So before you create your course, you're gonna need a website. Um, any WordPress theme will do. For this, I'm using Astra. Um, I'm using a starter site called uh, Life Coach. So head over to wpastra.com and you can check these out. These, uh, this one is totally free and it includes WooCommerce already. Um, the plugins you'll need are Tutor LMS, that's free. You can just go to your plugins, add new, um, search for Tutor LMS and then uh, install and activate that one. The other thing you'll obviously need is WooCommerce. Um, WooCommerce came installed in the starter site that I'm using, but if not, uh, install and activate WooCommerce. Um, go through the WooCommerce setup wizard. I do have an earlier video where I go through the whole WooCommerce setup wizard, so check that out, it's in the description. But otherwise, it's basically, um, you can go to uh, WooCommerce, go to settings, um, click on help there in the top right corner, click on setup wizard and run the setup wizard. That's all pretty fairly simple. Okay, so as soon as Tutor LMS is installed and activated, you'll get the Tutor LMS option in your WordPress menu. First thing you want to do is go to Tutor LMS and go to settings. And I'm gonna go through the settings that I used for my course. Most of these settings can be left on default, but a few of them I changed and I'm happy with what I got in the end here. So let's go through it. First thing, let's just go to um, settings and general and um, dashboard page will leave as dashboard, public profile will tick that one, load tutor CSS, tick that one and tick JavaScript, those are really good. Um, course visibility, I untick that and erase, untick, spotlight, untick, YouTube player, Vimeo player, those are all unticked, maintenance mode is unticked. So just set those up as I said and click save settings. Okay, the next settings you're gonna work on are under settings and course. Now most of these are completely optional. All they do is control how um, your actual course page is displayed. So things like these share buttons, um, the course level information, these materials requirements, and uh, this stuff down here, it's all controlled by the settings on a course. So I'll go through what works for um, me, but uh, you're free to play around with it and get it looking the way you, look, you want it. Okay, so Gutenberg Editor, I enabled it. If you disable it, you'll get to use the classic editor to edit your course page. Um, no big deal either way. Uh, you can hide the course products from the shop page if you want to keep your shop page separate from your course page. Um, I had that unticked. Um, most of them are unticked. I did tick uh, course author to disable course author. Um, I disabled the course duration, the total number of students enrolled, uh, the course update date. Um, I just prefer that. And otherwise, I disabled the announcements and the course reviews as well, but um, yeah, you might like to have reviews and announcements. It depends on the type of course you're running, but um, just go through, set it up to your own preference and then um, click save. Okay, so lessons, quiz, instructors, students, earnings, withdrawal style. I left all of those standard, um, didn't touch them. Monetization, I use WooCommerce and then WooCommerce here. Um, WooCommerce, you want to enable add to cart feature for guest users. Now, because we're using guest users, you'll want to go to settings and general in your WordPress dashboard and you want membership, anyone can register. So anyone can become a user on your website and do the course. Okay, now that everything is set up, let's go through building the actual course. So you go to Tutor LMS and courses and you want to add new. And when you click add new, you'll get uh, the course creation page. Now this is a lot like writing a blog post, but there's a few more options. So basically this is just like writing a blog, um, I'm going to show you one I've done already. Um, so 
I've called mine blog course, put in a little bit of a description. Um, I dropped a picture in. You can just add blocks in as if you're editing on Gutenberg. It's all very easy. Uh, maximum students, I set as zero, and that actually makes it unlimited. Um, difficulty level, I set as all levels. And select product as blog course. I'm going to cover that in a minute. You have to set up a product in WooCommerce and link it to your course so people can buy it. I made mine a paid course. And the course builder, I'm going to cover that in a minute, but um, you'll be able to set up your lessons. And I, you can add a few little uh, informations about your course. So um, benefits of the course, you make a little list and just show little dot points one by one. Um, same with the requirements and audience and materials. So just write a little bit about your course in those boxes. The course intro video, I made a little slideshow video. To make my um, intro video, I just made some slides up using canva.com, um, just a few slides. Uh, and then I link them together with a bit of music at this place called uh, Folody.com. That makes a simple slide show video with music. And so I ended up some, something like this. Um, you can make a little animation video, however you like. There's, there's lots of mobile apps and things that can do it. Or you could use Adobe Premiere if you want to get fancy, but completely up to you. But let's not get too distracted here. So I basically just uploaded the video using this option, um, HTML5, where you can upload a video, but you can link to YouTube or Vimeo or embed a video, however you, however you like, it will work. But I just made a little video and uploaded it with this uploader. The course announcements, I just left that blank, but if you want to make announcements to your students, you can use that feature. Um, the only other thing that was important was the excerpt. Um, I pasted a little bit of an introduction into the excerpt. That's kind of important. Basically, the excerpt is going to become the course overview. So when you scroll down to your course page, there'll be a, a tab here called overview. When you click that tab, uh, it'll load up and you can read that excerpt there. So uh, that's all it is. Make sure you fill it out a little bit so it looks right. And, and I think we're ready to get started making the actual lessons and quizzes. Okay. As you're working on this, don't forget to click update just to make sure all the settings are saved. Um, before you start closing windows or anything. So you make sure you've got all your changes updated. Um, now let's start building the actual course topics and quizzes. So um, there's an option here called Course Builder. Let's go ahead and click that. And you can see I've already made part one of the course. Um, I'll show you the course creation process. You just add a new topic here. You call it topic. I'm gonna make it that topic two. Um, put in a little summary about the course. Um, summary of topic two, and then click add topic. Okay, so now that we've added a topic, we can add lessons and quizzes to the topic. So let's click add a new lesson. All right, so I'm going to call that lesson, lesson number two, um, paste in a bit of filler text. Let's put a featured image in here. We can just grab an image out of our library. Um, let's grab that one. And then otherwise you can just leave this blank. I think that's all we need. And then click update lesson. You may have noticed that there were also options to add videos. So if you're doing a video course, you can totally do that using um, due to LMS2. Um, I was just using some filler text for this example. Next step, let's add a quiz. So click add topic quiz. So I'm just going to call this the idea spot quiz. And this is um, the quiz you need to pass for lesson two. Let's go save and next. Okay, so this is where we write our question. For question two, I'm going to ask the student, have you subscribed to Ideaspot on YouTube yet? So definitely hit like and subscribe on this video uh, if, it, if you found it useful. Okay, so this is where we write our question. So for question two, I'm going to ask, have you subscribed to Ideaspot on YouTube yet? Uh, definitely click like, click subscribe if you're finding this useful. Um, this can be a true or false. Uh, you can use a single choice or multiple choice. Single choice is nice because you can write um, like a lot of different answers, but the user can only choose one correct answer. So let's try that one. Um, answer is required. Randomize will turn the randomization off for the questions and display points. You can display the student's score as they're going or not. I'll leave that turned off. Um, the description is optional. And then let's put the answers in. So let's say yes. Yes, I have subscribed and it's an only a text answer. Let's save the answer. So we can add another option here. Um, no, let's save that answer. Now let's add another one in here. Um, I'll do it right now. Save the answer. And then we just have to 
indicate which one is the correct one. So I'll do it right now. That's the correct answer. So if you haven't done it, uh, go ahead and subscribe right now. Let's save and continue. So now we could go ahead and add another question, follow the same steps, add as many questions as you like. I'm not going to bother just for this demonstration because it's just um, repetitive, but let's go ahead, click next. Now here is the quiz. You can have unlimited time for the quiz if you set it to zero or otherwise you could limit the amount of time and you could display the time remaining. Uh, you can limit the amount of attempts on the quiz. So this would allow the user to do 10 attempts of the quiz um, before they get uh, locked out, but you can make it as, as uh, up to 20 or as few as one. So let's leave it at 10. Um, they need to get 80% before they pass in those 10 tries. So you could let them uh, say you needed them to get 100%, but they could try it 15 times maybe. Totally up to you. Go ahead and click save. There are a few advanced options that you can use. They're not uh, compulsory to, to do this, but you could auto start the quiz. You could um, hide the question numbers. You could sh do a character limit on short answer questions. If you're doing short answer questions, I was just doing that um, single choice answer. So it doesn't really matter. Um, and then click save. So now we're done adding our um, lessons and quizzes. We can close out of that. We can click update. And it should be pretty much ready. Okay, now let's talk about selling the course with WooCommerce. So we will need to set up a product in WooCommerce for our course. So go to WooCommerce and products and you can go ahead and add a new product. So let's do that. Adding a product to WooCommerce is pretty simple. It's just a matter of filling out this form. I'm gonna show you the one I've already done. So this is um, a product called blog course, a little bit of a description about the blog course, um, the product data, this is important. You want to be using a simple product and you want it to be virtual, downloadable, and for Tudor. So that's for Tudor LMS. Um, you set your price in here. I've just set it as zero so we could do a demonstration and use the checkout without having to go through the PayPal, but you can set your price here, whichever price you like. Um, a short description if you want, you don't really need it. Um, add a product image just for the sake of making your shop look good. And um, that is basically all you need. So once you've filled it all out, go ahead and click publish. That'll set up that new product for you. Then you'll need to go back to edit your course again to link it to WooCommerce. So Tutor LMS courses, find the course you just made and click edit. Once you're in the course editor, scroll down and find the product. So here we select the product. The product that we made is called blog course. That should show up from your um, list of WooCommerce products. Go ahead, select it, click update. We should be almost ready to go. The last thing you need to do is go to WooCommerce and settings and accounts and privacy because every user is going to need their own account on your WooCommerce site. So let's go ahead, go over to WooCommerce settings and accounts, and we're going to want to guest checkout, allow customers to place orders without an account. They need an account to be able to join. So uncheck that one. We do click allow customers to log into an existing account. We do want them to create an account during the checkout. So tick that one. Untick allow customers to create an account on the My Account page. And then when creating an account, automatically generate an account username for the customer based on their name. So um, we want to automatically create an account when the user buys the course. And this one you can choose for yourself. Um, if you untick it, the user will have to make their own password. If you tick it, um, WordPress will automatically generate a random password and then email the password. Um, I kind of prefer letting the user make their own password. That one's up to you. But everything else here has been left as default. So as soon as you've got all that sorted out, scroll to the bottom, click Save Changes. Okay, so now we're basically done. Let's go ahead and view the course. I'm going to open that in an incognito window. So um, it's going to show what a new user would see. So um, you'd have this Add to Cart option here. And you'd have your description, your little intro video. Um, you've got the topics for the course. The user can go ahead and click um, lesson one and quiz one. They can't actually view them until they've bought the course, um, but they can still look at what the um, topics and lessons are. So it's a nice way of uh, sort of previewing what's going to be in the course without actually being able to see what the course um, content is without buying it. So let's say, okay, I definitely want to buy this course. Um, I can go ahead and add to cart. The other thing I did was on the front page, I've got an add to cart button. So if they click join now, it'll add to cart. I'll show you how I did that. Um, basically what you need to do, I'm going to copy the link out here and show it to you. Um, 
you want to have your um, domain name there with slash question mark add to cart and then equals your um, product number. So you can get the product number by going back to your WooCommerce products. Um, if you hover your mouse over there, you can see ID is 583. So um, like I said before, you make that link slash add to cart equals 583. Go ahead. I'm going to copy that link. And then I'm using the Elementor page builder to do this, by the way, but you can use any page builder you like. I'll just go back in and I'll show you how I did it in Elementor. Um, edit the page with Elementor. So in Elementor, I'm just using a standard button. Um, go ahead and click on the button. And then I added that add to cart link in there. And then there we go. Click update. And then as soon as the user clicks that, it'll add the cost to the cart. I should also briefly mention that under WooCommerce settings and products, when a user adds something to the cart, it redirects them to the cart page after a successful addition. So make sure that's clicked in your WooCommerce settings under products and then click save changes. But basically, let's go back to our course. As soon as I click that, it'll add it to cart and it will send them straight to the cart page. So this actually improves your sales and conversions. So here we are in our cart. Let's proceed to the checkout. There we go. We've got our blog course in the cart. So the user can go ahead, fill in their details. They'll have to make a password like we talked about before and then go ahead and place their order. That'll go through just normal WooCommerce procedure there. And there we go. We're all done. WordPress will automatically generate an account for the student. They can go back to the course. I just made a link to the blog course in the menu there. And there, instead of instead of seeing add to cart, now we can actually start the course. So that the student can go ahead, click the course. They can go through our lessons. They can go to the quizzes. Um, they can access all the content now that they've bought the course. So um, that basically wraps it up. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, click like, click subscribe. I'm going to come back. Um, let me know if there's any questions or if there's any other plugins that you like better than um, Tutor LMS. I think it's um, probably the best one I've found so far just because I love the ability to link it to WooCommerce. Getting that in the free version is awesome. So um, I hope you have had as much fun as I have. Uh, I'll catch you later and I'll see you next time.